What is going on, guys? Matt Downs with Daily Grind Fantasy Sports here to give you the edge for this NFL showdown slate between the Chiefs and the Raiders. Cannot wait to break it down. If you guys are brand new to this channel, we provide both free and paid content for all daily fantasy sports across all sports. If you could please show your support by hitting that subscribe button, notification bell, and of course smashing that like button for all of our future NFL content. If you would like to know more about becoming a better DFS player and taking down that big GBP, head over to www.dgfantasy.com. On dgfantasy.com, we give you cheat sheets for every major sport along with ownership projections, actual projections, and strategy for every single slate. We also cover optimal cash plays as well as preferred GBP plays and stacks for specific contest sizes. We do the dirty work for you. We are also currently partnered with Fantasy Cruncher, the best optimizer in the industry. When signing up for our $30 package, you also get a $20 credit to use towards any Fantasy Cruncher product. We provide the best value in the industry. Now let's go ahead and dive right into this Chiefs vs. Raiders matchup here on DraftKings. This is the Showdown Sunday Night Football Breakdown. Let's go over the game total and the team spreads right now. We have Kansas City now favored by two points to the Las Vegas Raiders. They are playing at home, which means this should be a shootout potential game here. 52 is a very, very high game total, so like this game to shoot out. Don't know if defenses are necessarily in play. We saw a defense, you know, I think this was uh, this was the Thursday night football slate that actually made the optimal. Another touchdown score. It's just, it just always seems like it happens that way where the defenses shouldn't make the optimal and they do because of a, of a defensive touchdown, which again, very unlikely, less than a 5% chance to happen. And as you guys can see here, in terms of defenses, they're always carrying some ownership, uh, both showing 11.5% owned here on the slate. So I do personally think that they are a sharp fade. Again, I have been very successful in showdowns just by fading the defenses as a whole, especially in this type of game script here where both of these teams should be putting up a lot of points, both pretty decent offenses. Um, and like I said, should be very competitive as well here with the two point spread. But let's go ahead and focus. We're going to be going position by position, uh, team by team. I think it's a very easy to follow format. Starting out at the quarterback position here for the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, Patrick Mahomes is 51.9% owned. He should be in the optimal regardless. The, the Chiefs offense obviously thrives through Patrick Mahomes. That total or that that industry average here of 21 is a little bit on the lower side we know that Patrick Holmes has been struggling as of late if we pull up his, his game logs here 27.98 was the last point, uh, good good week he had here versus the Washington football team came back down to earth 9.74 15 and 10.44 the one thing with Patrick Mahomes is that his uh, wide receivers are definitely reliant on him doing well so if you believe the wide receivers are going to do well then you also believe Patrick Holmes is going to do well so uh, if you put a wide receiver in the captain spot make sure you you come back with Patrick Mahomes here 51.9% owned he's definitely gonna be very high owned in a game script that should be favoring a ton of points um, next we have the running back position we know that CEH is out another week he is going to be active next week but don't really care until next week we have Daryl Williams here at 33% owned he's gonna be teetering on that cash slash GBP category right now I do find his price tag a uh, pretty appealing here at 7.2k I don't know if I'm going to land on him in cash in order to hit that price point he has to get to 14 points and I do think that's definitely possible he is the primary um, ball carrier here for this team with CEH out of the lineup getting 19 13 5 attempts to pass uh, 3 games he's also getting receptions out of the backfield however they have been utilizing the other uh, running backs in this offense as well Derek Gore is next on the list here and in terms of snap counts he's actually getting some decent run if we take a look at Derek uh, Gore here getting 7 20 and 15% of the snaps. Um, the one appealing thing here with Derek Gore is his price tag at 1K. If he does steal a touchdown, which he did um, a couple weekends ago here, uh, I don't mind him as a last piece. $1,000, so he only has to get the two DK points. He has covered that price point in the past three contests. Well, the 1.7 points he didn't, but he got pretty close. So I do like him as a last piece. Um, he is going to be carrying very low ownership, and he could definitely break the slate if he does score another touchdown. Jarek McKinnon, another uh, person that could break the slate. And at his price point, he's even more appealing here. $800 also on the field. Technically has been playing more than Derek Gore. 31%, 16 and 31% of the snaps. So I don't mind him here at an $800 price tag. And the one thing with McKinnon is that he does get some PPR upside. If you guys look at his receiving upside, got three, four, and four targets the past three games. So yes, I definitely don't mind Jarek McKinnon. I think that there's a lot of value here at the running back position on the Chiefs side of the ball and overall in terms of the slate. But here at a 7.2k price tag i do like daryl williams he's obviously my favorite he is the bell cow here um getting about 70 percent of the workload in terms of the running backs and then Derek gore and mckinnon do follow behind i do prioritize mckinnon over Derek gore however i love both of these guys if they do steal a touchdown look for the slate breaker there at very low ownership 
Going over to the wide receiver position, yes, Tyreek Hill is going to be a cash necessity if Patrick Mahomes does well, then Tyreek Hill does well. If Tyreek Hill does well, then Patrick Mahomes does well. You guys get it. You should have both of those guys in cash. If you don't believe that the Chiefs are going to be able to keep up with the Raiders and full fade them, um, that could make for a very contrarian lineup. But right now, Tyreek Hill is showing 44 point. 6% ownership. He is a he has a 19 point fantasy projection, which is the industry average and one of the highest projected players on the slate. McCole Hardman next on the list here at 6.4K is their wide receiver number two. He plays about 65, you know, 60 ish percent of the snaps here. So I don't mind him at a 6.4 uh, price tag. Uh, Josh Gordon, since being involved a little bit more in the offense, since they did sign him, McCole Hardman really hasn't taken a hit. So I wouldn't let that worry you. McCole Hardman also showing lower ownership here at 14.6%. I think a lot of people are actually going to land on him just because he's fitting a lot of the builds here at 6.4 uh, 4k he's a decent option i don't hate or love him i think he's also teetering in that line of a cash slash gbp category um mccall harman just okay stance on him right now he's projected 8.5 points byron pringle at 3k um i can say the exact same thing about him not in love with him don't really hate him either uh 46 of the snaps so he's playing about half of the snaps here at 3k yes if he catches a couple balls could easily break the slate wide open especially if he does catch a touchdown um we've seen him break his price tag he only has to get six points he got 2.2 last game obviously didn't cover there 12 8 8 4 so he's kind of all over the place here pringle definitely more of a gpp uh, candidate right now i have him projected for 6.8 dk points here at 11.4 uh, percent ownership the marcus robinson is another guy i want to talk about here he also somewhat involved in the offense here if we take a look at his snap counts probably on the field you know between about 40 and 22 percent when josh gordon does play um so again i think these uh, I think these price tags make a lot of sense. It goes right in the order. Tyreek Hill at 11K, McCall Harmon at 6.4K, Prangle, Robinson. The the one guy I do think you need in your lineup if you're going to be playing cash in small GBPs is obviously Tyreek Hill. But the rest of these guys, whoever you land on, I really don't hate. Demarcus Robinson, a, a valuable price tag there at 2K. And then the last guy we're going to talk about here is Josh Gordon, averaging 0.5 fantasy points. Um, per game since being on the Kansas City roster. And technically, that covers the price tag because he only has to get the 0.4 points to cover that price tag of $200. So is Josh Gordon worth it? Sure, if you're looking for a last pump piece. I just don't think he has that much upside because he does play the least amount out of these other four wide receivers. So uh, Josh Gordon, $200. Don't mind him. He's technically showing 7.7% ownership, so that might be a bit inflated. But I don't mind any one of these, these wide receivers. I don't hate them. Don't love them. I'm just neutral on them. If you happen to land on them, then okay, you can plug and play them into your lineup. Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey. Okay, Travis Kelsey is by far one of my favorite assets to have in all of fantasy football because you guys know the reliability with him, but this offense has just stunk this season. I mean, it's been all over the place, and, and Travis Kelsey really hasn't been getting as many targets as what we're used to seeing, at least from previous seasons. And earlier on in the season, he was getting 20-plus points every single game. But right now, he's projected at 17 points, which is about what his ceiling has been recently. And at 33.4% ownership, I don't necessarily think you need Travis Kelsey. And I know that really does hurt to say, but at a ownership of 33.4%, it looks like the public really doesn't believe in Travis Kelsey anymore. So if you compare that to the ownership of, let me go back to Daryl Williams. Daryl Williams is also showing 33% ownership. It looks like people are splitting down the middle there between taking Daryl Williams and Travis Kelsey. I honestly think Daryl Williams is a little bit safer. You get Patrick Mahomes in your lineup, you get Tyreek Hill, you get pretty much the entire passing game covered other than Travis Kelsey, but you still benefit having Patrick Mahomes in there. And then you come back with the running game. If they get involved in the running game a lot more than they should, you have Daryl Williams. So I do think that's a little bit more of a safe build, in my opinion. But Travis Kelsey, obviously not going to complain if he is in my lineup because we know he can have some good games. And he did get, catch a touchdown last game, so I don't hate him. I just think that Tyreek Hill is more involved and has been here in the passing game, even when the Chiefs have been struggling. Then last but not least, we have to talk about the kickers. Harrison Bucker, I do like um, more than I like the kicker on the other side of the ball with Carlson, just because the game script does favor them a little bit more. They are favored technically, but this could become a, a kicking type game. You know, I can see late in the fourth, you know, they have to sell for a lot of field goals. It could be a close type contest. So therefore, I do like the kickers. I do think they're viable in both cash and GPPs. Last but not least here, we're going to talk about the Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, Derek Carr is another cash consideration and should be in the majority of your lineups here. 45.3% ownership. I believe that's the second highest on the slate right behind Patrick Mahomes at 10.6k I really do like that price tag it shouldn't he really is is he should be a little bit more than that but at 10.6k I think you get in a little bit of a discount there projected at 19 points and in the game where you should be scoring a lot of points nothing more needs to be said about Derek Carr next on the list here is going to be Josh Jacobs at 24.8 percent ownership I don't think you need him I think because of the game script they're not going to utilize him as much as they could potentially use 
Kenyon Drake. Kenyon Drake at 4.4K has been getting so much workload out of the backfield in terms of targets because any game where, where they're playing from behind, you see that he gets more targets. Last game, they lost to the Giants. He got eight targets out of the backfield for six receptions and exploded his price tag. I actually don't get the ownership here. I think it should be a little bit higher, and he's by far one of my favorite value options with a decent amount of upside here. If, he, if they do fall behind, um, he's half the price tag of Josh Jacobs, and he honestly could just straight up outperform Josh Jacobs. So I honestly expected the ownership to be flipped here i do like Kenyon drake and i consider him cash viable just looking at the stats looking at the game script and looking at what should happen here Kenyon drake is also on the field a decent amount compared to josh jacobs switching over to the wide receiver position here we have hunter renfro he is the clear-cut wide receiver one without rugs in town unfortunately with the whole rugs incident we don't see him anymore in the roster uh, hunter renfro 13.5 is my favorite wide receiver the target other than tyree kill i do think that they're going to rely a little bit more on uh, hunter renfro here in this game script again playing from behind if you assume that they're going to be playing from behind at 8.4k i think that's another decent price tag don't hate or love him but i do prioritize him right behind tyree kill and then brian edwards mr boomer bust himself i do consider him more gpp viable as you can see last game he got four targets for zero receptions he's just been all over the place he plays a decent amount of time on the field and i just consider him a a decent option here at 16.2 percent ownership in terms of gbp right now we have him penned for eight points i think that's a little bit aggressive but uh brian edwards at 5.4k don't hate or love him either and then we're finally going to get to somebody i absolutely love in this contest and no i'm not talking about deshaun jackson deshaun jackson was just traded or picked off waivers whatever happened um uh, to the raiders here a couple days ago and he is 4.2k we have absolutely no idea what his role is going to look like i do assume though that it's not going to be as high in terms of the the amount of, of times he's going to be on the field in terms of the volume that he's going to get um than what we saw there with the ramps he only played about 20 to 30 percent of the snaps they use him as a deep field threat and deshaun jackson really isn't that fast anymore so yes they do need another body because henry ruggs isn't in the the offense anymore so that's why they brought in deshaun jackson i just don't think they're going to utilize him here in the very first game on sunday night football the way that we want him to because there's this other guy right behind him his name is Zay Jones. Zay Jones at $600 at 20% ownership is carrying a decent amount of ownership, and I'll show you why here in just a second. Zay Jones in week nine without the first game here with, with Henry Ruggs played 96% of the snaps. That was the most, the most of all wide receivers here in that game. More than Brian Edwards, more than Darren Waller, and more than Hunter Renfro. I, and I really don't care what Deshaun Jackson does to his snap count percentage because even if he only plays 50, if he plays 30% of snaps, guys, look at this price tag. His price tag is literally six hundred dollars he has to get the 1.2 fantasy points right now i'm projected for three uh just because i had to throw a projection on there and i, I took the uh the 2021 average and looked at his last games and i just put three on there just because i wanted him to pop up in a lot of my builds regardless zay jones is by far the best value play on the slate if he does play 96 percent of snaps he should be the chalkiest guy in the slate i think the one hesitation that everybody has here is we don't know what deshaun jackson is going to look like here in game one we do know that Rahana Renfro is going to be playing a decent amount of snaps. We know that Brian Edwards is the wide receiver too. But we also know that Zay Jones is the wide receiver three. And therefore, thinking that Deshaun Jackson will affect him a little bit more than he should. But honestly, if I had to, to pen a, a decent amount of time that he's on the field, I would assume he's playing more than 50% of snaps still. He's really not affected that much by Deshaun Jackson because Deshaun Jackson really isn't, you know, he's just a deep threat. He's not going to be out there for the majority of the game. And Zay Jones is just, you know, he's equated in this offense. There's no reason why he shouldn't be playing a majority of the game. So yes, just to kind of recap here, Zay Jones is my favorite wide receiver, probably on the entire slate in terms of value. Um, other than Tyree Kill. And then I'm going to prioritize Hunter Renfro and then come back with some of these other mid-range value there from the Kansas City side. Then last but not least here, we have the tight end picture. Darren Waller is another guy you should definitely consider for cash. I know there's a lot of a lot of pay-up options and you guys are going to probably ask me in the comment section who you're prioritizing. But right now, Darren Waller doesn't have a fantasy projection of Kelsey, but it's slightly less. So they're really right there. I mean, they're, they're, they're both the exact same in terms of the value. Um, Darren Waller is technically showing 3% more in terms of ownership. So I guess he's more chalky. But yeah, I I consider Darren Waller and both uh, Travis Kelsey cash viable. You're probably going to have to pick one of the two. And if you have Kansas City guys, you should probably come back with uh, you know at least a couple uh, Las Vegas guys, especially if you believe it's going to be close. And then I really don't like uh, any of these other tight end options. Mario uh, has been a beast when, when Darren Waller's been off the field. But the thing is, Darren Waller's playing now, so I don't really consider him. 
uh, a cash consideration. I do consider more of a GPP play. And that will wrap up my breakdown, guys, for DraftKings. Let's go ahead and focus on my favorite prize pick entry. My favorite prize pick entry is going to be Hunter Renfro, 56.5 receiving yards over. If you guys haven't signed up for prize picks, first of all, you can do that enter code using DGF on sign up for 100% matchup to $100. Helps us out, helps you guys out, and you guys get a free entry every single time you watch uh, any one of our, our YouTube videos. And that will wrap up my breakdown, guys. Hopefully, you did enjoy this breakdown. If you did, please do hit that subscription button, notification bell and of course smash that like button for all of your future NFL content with all that being said have a great rest of your day and let's cash